In this video, I'll be taking you through the steps involved with analyzing an image using the Western Analysis ribbon. So if during acquisition you did not apply the Western Analysis, what you need to do is come to the uh, Analysis ribbon right here, and then under Type, click on this and choose Western. Now once that has been applied, you will notice that there is a new ribbon that opens up here uh, just to the right of Lab Book. And chances are the markers will not, or the boundary will not be in the correct location. So the easiest way to do this is to click on Redraw Boundary. And when you do that, you click and drag an area around uh, your outer lanes. And once the lane lines appear, you will need to adjust the number of lanes that you have on your image. And for this particular western blot, there are 13 lanes, so I'm going to adjust this to 13. And once you have that set, you can do some fine-tuning of this. You may have to adjust the position uh, somewhat. You want the lines to be going through the, through the lanes, or through the bands. And they don't have to be going directly through the center, just somewhat close, uh, because when I do the band finding here, you will see that the position and slope of the lines has been adjusted to some extent. And you can adjust the band finding sensitivity using the more and fewer. Now, if you're doing a two color blot, uh, it's usually easier if you switch over to doing single color uh, for finding the bands, uh, because most of the time, you'll need different band finding sensitivity between the two different wavelengths. So if I click on more here, you will see that we do get uh, some more bands showing up on here. Uh, and so I can use the more and fewer to uh, find the correct number of bands on here. And if doing the more and fewer uh, does not give you the your desired results, uh, you can do some manual editing. So let's say that we have this extra band right here. If I click on this, I click on these, um, you can highlight them and just simply click the delete key on the keyboard to get rid of them. You can also add band markers. So if in, let's say, my molecular weight marker right here, uh, if I, if it didn't find all the bands that I needed, I could simply just add one just like that. And then you can switch over to your other channel and use uh, the more and fewer again. You see that I'm getting rid of some of those bands, those lower molecular weight bands. But it did delete one of my band markers up here that I do need, so I'm going to click the Add right there. And then I can also adjust those. And once you have your band markers placed, you can uh, edit these. So if I zoom in here, um, I change this, I can change the height and position of these as needed. Now, if you wanted to have this analyze, these two bands analyze as one band, if you highlight both of those, you can click the Merge button, and then it, it turns them into a single band marker. Now, one thing that we have added to the software uh, in this version is the ability to add bands to all of the lanes. Now these are all of the non-marker lanes. So when I click that, you will see that there is a line here, and then I can use that to position uh, and place band markers all the way across there. Now with both the add and the add to all lanes, you'll notice that I'm still in the in that mode. So if I want to go back and edit any of the lanes, I either need to click here on the select or uh, you can also use the escape key on the keyboard uh, for, the, for the same purpose. So molecular weight markers. Uh, it comes preloaded with uh, our one and two color markers. And so I'm going to use the, the Lycor one color marker here. Now, if you want to have your own marker sets, uh, you can create new markers. Uh, and the way that you do that is to click this edit button right here uh, and you can add and remove these as need be and then once you have created that custom marker set you will save that as whatever name you want to give it. 
So I have the one marker sets, um, and then I can choose anywhere from one to three markers. If I choose one marker, it sets the leftmost lane as the marker lane. If I do two, it uses the outer lanes. And then if I do three, it picks one in the middle. Now, if you have just one marker lane, and let's say uh, it is the you have it in the rightmost lane, if I click on this M1 right here, I can move it over, and now uh, the rightmost lane becomes my marker lane. Uh, or if it's in the middle, you can set it there, and then that marker or that lane is is the marker lane. So it goes just directly to the right of the uh, lane top right there. You can also use the Western analysis to do normalization. So you can set either the 700 or the 800 channel as your uh, as your normalization channel. And for this particular image, I'm going to use the 700 channel uh, because this is my loading control. For background subtraction, you can use either lane right here, which will use the entire length of the lane, excluding the, the band areas for your background subtraction. Or you can use what we would call a local background, uh, either average or median. And with this, you can set uh, the, the width of the band, or the width of the um, background area, anywhere from one to five pixels. And you can also choose whether you want to use all sides of the box around the band, whether you want to use the top and bottom or the right and left. Um, the lane will work fine. The lane set or the lane background will work fine if you have a clean molecular weight marker, or excuse me, uh, a clean um, primary antibody. But if you have an antibody, say like such as a phosphotyrosine antibody or just one that gives you a lot of nonspecific bands, using either the average or median is probably your better choice. You can also set a user-defined background. So if I were to draw draw a rectangle somewhere on here, I could set that as my background shape. So you have several options when it comes to that. Uh, the display up here, you can have different things uh, shown on the image. Um, and you can turn the local background off and on. And so you have uh, full control over what is being displayed on the screen. I can turn off the band markers. I can hide the lanes local background, all of those can be used to adjust uh, what is being displayed on the screen. Now, when you go to export your image, if you don't want all of these shown on the screen, you can use this little feature right here to toggle the features off and on. All right, so when with the Western analysis, we get two new tables down here at the bottom. One is the Western lanes and one is the Western bands. And here, if I wanted to label what my sample was right here, I could just type in, this is sample one. And then um, that will be carried over into uh, the bands table as well. So if I change that name, and now under lane name, you will see that sample one is has been carried over to this point. So that's really what the lanes... It, the, the Western Lanes table is used for is for naming your samples. In the bands table is where we get all of the data. And so here we get signal uh, for this particular band. And if I highlight that here, it changes the highlight up here. Or if I click on one of these, it changes the highlight down here. And so what we have, we have the signal and we have the molecular weight. Now, out here to the side, we also have uh, the normalized signal and the normalization factor. And what happens with this is that what, the way the software will do the normalization is it will find the band in your normalization channel that has the highest signal, which in this case is this band uh, here just to the right of the molecular weight marker. And so that has a signal of 19.3. And it divides it by itself to come up with this normalization factor of 1. It will then go to the next lane. It will take the signal from this. So we have 
and it will be divided by that 19.3 to come up with a normalization factor. So what the software has determined in this particular case is that there is 91% as much protein loaded in the this, in this second lane as compared to the first lane. It then takes that normalization factor, this 0.911, and it uh, takes 17.6 divided by the 0.911 one one to come up with 19.3. So that is the normalized signal. And it then goes over to the um, to the 800 channel and it uses that it does the same process. It takes this 0.911, uh, it divides 0.124 by the 0.911 to come up with this normalized signal, this 0.137. So that's how the normalization process uh, is done within Image Studio. Uh, it's essentially the same as dividing your unknown by the known. Uh, the reason that we use this normalization factor is that it keeps your signal and the normalized signal roughly in the same scale. Now, if you would like to uh, view these data uh, within a chart, I can come over here to the chart tab uh, just under uh, or just to the right here on the screen. And I want to choose a Western Bands table just like that um, and so we have a charting of the entire uh, data set both the 700 and 800. If you would like any further information on the Western analysis that can be found in the help section. Thank you very much.